really, really enjoy this Service Christie channel. I've listened to a lot of his videos, and they're usually about an hour, sometimes closer to two, and never has he ever disappointed. I love everything about his videos. I do have a little bit of weird questioning about one other incident that he was interviewing. Jacob Presh. So that is on the sideline of my thoughts. But as far as his work on this channel, the topics he handles, I can tell that this guy spends a lot of time in his Bible. He is very traditional in his viewpoints and theology, his doctrine. I haven't really seen him go weird on doctrine. Um, I really like his channel and I love this video. I'm still trying to get through it because every time he goes to Tim Mackey, it just sends me spinning into other videos with Tim Mackey. So I'm still trying to finish this, but it's so good. It's called Hell is Real and it's forever. And he kind of reminds me of a male me <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a sense at least on some aspects. So let's listen, because I just love his work. Again, nothing new, repackaged heresy. Let's begin with Tim Mackey's assertions on hell. And here's what's crucially important, and this is a very simple way to think about communicating this, and why this story is wrong. If you look at the first sentence of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God made heavens and what does it not say? It doesn't say, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth and hell. God didn't make, whatever hell is, God didn't make it. It's nowhere to be found on page one of your Bible, right? What God made is heaven and earth, and what does God think about it? It's, it's very good. It's very good. So whatever hell is, it comes into the story later. Interesting. Twice he says, whatever hell is, really trying to cast unnecessary doubt on the reality of hell. Whatever it is. And as you'll see shortly, he's trying to make this into more of a state of mind um, or hyper-spiritualize it and dismiss the notion that it's an actual place of imprisonment and torment and retribution, right? A place of punishment. And so he says it's not found on the first page of the Bible. Well, Tim Mackey's biblical ignorance and a heightened form of illogic shine through uh, here. It's not on the first page of the Bible, therefore God didn't create it. Well, let's start in Matthew chapter 25 first and verse, uh, verse 41. Matthew 25, 41, this is Jesus speaking. Uh, Jesus says, then he will also say to those on his left hand, on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, that leaves us with basically three options. I'm going to exclude animals and take into account any intelligent, rational being, which would only present us with God himself, angels, or humans. Whoever prepared this everlasting fire, it can only be one of those three options. We can rule humans out as this is a spiritual place, and it has an everlasting element. So humans could not have prepared this place. Uh, I find it wildly unreasonable to believe that Satan himself fashioned or prepared a place for his own torment and his own eternal <laughs> destruction, and I don't find it consistent or compatible with reason or general biblical exegesis that uh, the two-thirds good angels fashioned or prepared this place of torment. That only leaves God. God is the creator. He is <laughs> the primary and sole creator. In fact, it, it says in Colossians that all things were made through Jesus. Nothing with, was made without him. Without him was nothing made that was made, I believe is how it's phrased. So... Just because it's not on the first page of the Bible doesn't mean God didn't make it. Uh, this is a bizarre affirmation. Here's an example of what else is not on the first page of the Bible. Any reference to the cross? 
any reference to God's plan of redemption through the advent and incarnation of Jesus Christ our Lord? That is not on the first page of the Bible. Does that mean God didn't plan it or that it's not a reality or that he didn't prepare it? No, this is an absolutely uh, a marvelously foolish statement. Mm -hmm. It's not on the first page of the Bible, therefore God didn't create it. Well, we know from the words of Jesus that this everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. And since humans didn't do it, and there's no reason to believe that other angels prepared it for their own destruction, uh, nor are angels capable of creating things independently, that leaves only God. Only God could have and did prepare it, whether or not it's on the first page or According to my Bible, the 853rd page, the fact of the matter is it's in the Bible. Yep. This is one of the many games you'll see played by deceiving men like Tim Mackey. Let's continue. And if you're familiar with the story, how it works, hell or evil or sin, the various names that it's called in the Bible, is something that humans have created by our decision to seize autonomy from God. Did you see that? Hell or evil or sin is something that humans have created. Now he's playing with words here. This is a deconstructionist hard at work. Hell, well let's start with evil and sin. Evil and sin could be considered synonymous. They are synonymous terms. Hell is not synonymous. It is related but not synonymous with those two things and he just slips it in there. He wants to make hell something other than a region or a place, something other than what it actually is. Lawbreaking and delinquency or delinquency are not prison. They are related to prison insofar as the breaking of the law will send you to prison, but they are not the same thing. One of them is an action and the other one is a location or a reality. Your mortgage is not your house. It may secure your house, but it is not the same as where you lay your head at night. You don't lay your head in your mortgage. One is related to the other, but they are not the same. So he says hell or sin or evil, um, as we see it in the Bible, uh, he is playing with words. This is a deconstructionist and a deceiver. Don't be fooled. Hell is related to evil and related to sin. It is the consequence, the ultimate consequence and akin to prison in the same way that law-breaking is related to prison. Related, but different. Let's continue. Now, how do I know that hell is an appropriate word to talk about this? Jesus' brother. Jesus' brother wrote a letter that's in, a, in your Bible, right? It's called the letter of James. It's very interesting. And Jesus' brother, who he hung out with Jesus a lot. I'm, I'm bound to trust the man when he says he's representing the teachings of Jesus. James talks about, the in chapter 3, he talks about the power of the, the tongue and how the human tongue has the power to, to bless and praise God, the creator, but at the same time, the human tongue has the ability to gossip about people and to tear down their character and to speak ill and poorly of them. And James says this, it's flabbergasting. He says, when humans do that with their tongues, he says their tongues are lit on fire by hell. Are you with me? Now, what are the implications of that? The implications that hell isn't just something about, like, the end of the game. Hell is a reality that is present now. It's a reality that humans unleash on each other and on God's good world to ruin and destroy relationships and to destroy people. Hell is something that we have created on earth. And God hates hell. And he, the story of the Bible is a story about God wanting to heal his world and get the hell out of earth. Okay, wait a minute. Where in any of the Bible do you ever, and I mean ever, see God say, quote, I hate hell so josh just did a great job of explaining what hell is and who made it 
Why would God then say, I hate hell, either in direct word or in principle? Because Mackey has made the place hell and the concept of evil, which is the opposite of good, that we already talked about in previous videos, this issue of spiritual damnation and that being passed along, this Ichabod, the, the spirit has left the temple of, of humans and we bring forth evil because we act within that spiritually damned state of not having God directly in our bodies as unsaved people until the remedy comes along that we do participate in that evil when we speak and we think and we do evil. That is a consequence. It's a choice. And the choice giver entered the world full of the Holy Spirit, the anointed one. So Adam lost the Holy Spirit. Last Adam, Yahweh, enters the world, enters his ministry, gets baptized with water. There's this weird thing between water and spiritual things. There's a whole connection there I don't have time to get into. And he's full of the Holy Spirit. His title is Messiah or Mashiach. We've heard so much about Mashiach lately because of the Jews and unbelief and that whole thing. But all Mashiach means is the anointed. And it goes back to the savior of the world, the do-over, the restart, the, 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 the one new humanity offered full of the Holy Spirit. And he died for us so that we could... He could, he could, through his plan of justification, sanctification, and glorification, when all three of those are completed in his good time, we will no longer be participating in evil. When you get your sinless nature, Peter called it your divine nature. You're never going to be God. You're just going to share in God's holiness. So he reverses everything, and sin and sin participation is not the same thing as the place. Jesus said that, that there would be people who would die in their sins in John 8, 24, I believe. And they would go to hell. Hell is something God talked about often. Never once in all of scripture has God ever said, I hate hell. It is God's just prison for the vessels of wrath so that the whole world could see that God punishes evil. God does not like evil. God hates evil. And God hates unbelief that keeps people locked up in evil. See, unbelief is the worst sin of all sins. It's even worse than child molestation or killing and eating babies. I mean, those are some bad things, man, and people do those things. But even as bad as those things are, and you could use your imagination to think of what else would constitute the worst of the worst of the worst of sins, I tell you that all of those things together are not nearly as bad, though they're bad, as the sin of digging your heels in and committing to unbelief. Do you know why? I've thought about this a lot. Unbelief refuses to have all that litany of horrific, disgusting, evil, nasty sin forgiven. It is the one giant resounding no that mankind tells God. God hates evil that is unrepentant. He does not hate the place of justice that evil will go to to justly be punished. That, that evil would not only conduct the evil, but that evil would say no to the good that came to fix it is the highest definition of evil, that issue of the unforgivable sin. The one thing God won't forgive is your disbelief. That's a huge deal. Tim Mackey is lying when he says that God says, I hate hell. No, he never does. As far as this James 3 scripture, when you really sit and you think about what James is saying with regard to our influence, the soil of the heart and how, uh, you know, Jesus said, out of the mouth doth the heart speak. 
who and what you are, the evil that is within you, it, it manifests in various ways. One of those ways is through the influence of the tongue. And there is this relationship to those in unrepentance who use that tongue to destroy, who reject Jesus and who are going eventually to that place that they belong for that behavior that is a part of them that constitutes what evil is. And that place constitutes the punishment, the just punishment of evil. How could a good God send people to hell? Because he punishes evil that won't transform through Jesus on its own.